Today's Bible reading for January 16th. The Old Testament reading is from Genesis chapter 32, verse 13 to Genesis chapter 34, verse 31. He spent the night there, and from what he had with him, he selected a gift for his brother Esau, 200 female goats and 20 male goats, 200 ewes and 20 rams, 30 female camels with their young, 40 cows and 10 bulls, and 20 female donkeys and 10 male donkeys. He put them in the care of his servants, each herd by itself, and said to his servants, go ahead of me and keep some space between the herds. He instructed the one in the lead, when my brother Esau meets you and asks, what do you, sorry, who do you belong to and where are you going and who owns all these animals in front of you? Then you are to say, they belong to your servant Jacob. They are a gift sent to my Lord Esau, and he is coming behind us. He also instructed the second and the third and all the others who followed the herds. You are to say the same thing to Esau when you meet him. And be sure to say, your servant Jacob is coming behind us, for he thought, I will pacify him with these gifts I'm sending on ahead. Later, when I see him, perhaps he will receive me. So Jacob's gifts went on ahead of him, but he himself spent the night in the camp. That night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his 11 sons, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, what is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, It is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel, and he was limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the Israelites do not eat the tendon attached to the socket of the hip, because the socket of Jacob's hip was touched near the tendon. Jacob looked up and there was Esau coming with 400 men. So he divided the children among Leah, Rachel, and the two female servants. He put the female servants and their children in front, Leah and her children next, and Rachel and Joseph in the rear. He himself went on ahead and bowed down to the ground seven times as he approached his brother. But Esau ran to meet Jacob and embraced him. He threw his arms around his neck and kissed him, and they wept. Then Esau looked up and saw the women and children. Who are these with you, he asked. Jacob answered, they are the children God has graciously given your servants. Then the female servants and their children approached and bowed down. Next, Leah and her children came and bowed down. Last of all, came Joseph and Rachel, and they too bowed down. Esau asked, 
What is the meaning of all these flocks and herds I met? I find favor in your eyes, my Lord, he said. But Esau said, I, have, I already have plenty, my brother. Keep what you have for yourself. No, please, said Jacob. If I have found favor in your eyes, accept this gift from me. For to see your face is like seeing the face of God. Now that you have received me favorably, please accept the present that was brought to you. For God has been gracious to me and I have all I need. And because Jacob insisted, Esau accepted it. Then Esau said, let us be on our way. I'll accompany you. But Jacob said to him, my Lord knows that the children are tender and that I must care for the ewes and cows that are nursing their young. If they are driven hard just one day, all the animals will die. So let my Lord go on ahead of his servant while I move along slowly at the pace of the flocks and herds before me and the pace of the children until I come to my Lord in Seir. Esau said, then let me leave some of my men with you. But why do that, Jacob asked. Just let me find favor in the eyes of my Lord. So that day, Esau started on his way back to Seir. Jacob, however, went to Sukkoth, where he built a place for himself and made shelters for his livestock. That is why the place is called Sukkoth. After Jacob came to Padan Aram, he arrived safely at the city of Shechem in Canaan and camped within sight of the city. For, for a hundred pieces of silver, he bought from the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem, the plot of ground where he pitched his tent. There he set up an altar and called it El Elohi Israel. Now, Dana, the daughter Leah had born to Jacob, went out to visit the women of the land. When Shechem, son of Hamor, the Hivite, the ruler of that area, saw her, he took her and raped her. His heart was drawn to Dina, daughter of Jacob. He loved the young woman and spoke tenderly to her. And Shechem said to his father Hamor, get me this girl as my wife. When Jacob heard, that his daughter Dina had been defiled. His sons were in the fields with his livestock, so he did nothing about it until they came home. Then Shechem's father, Hamor, went out to talk with Jacob. Meanwhile, Jacob's sons had come in from the field as soon as they heard what had happened. They were shocked and furious because Shechem had done an unrighteous thing in Israel by sleeping with Jacob's daughter, a thing that should not be done. Hamor said to them, my son Shechem has his heart set on your daughter. Please give him, please give her to him as his wife. Intermarry with us, give us your daughters and take our daughters for yourselves. You can settle among us. The land is open to you. Live in it, trade in it and acquire property in it. Then Shechem said to Dina's father and brothers, let me find favor in your eyes and I will give you whatever you ask. Make the price of the bride and the gift and to drink as great as you like and I'll pay whatever you ask me. Only give me the young woman as my wife. Because their sister Dina had been defiled, Jacob's sons replied deceitfully, as they spoke to Shechem and his father Hamor. They said to them, we can't do such a thing. We can't give our sister to a man who is not circumcised. That will be a disgrace to us. We will enter into an agreement with you on one condition only, that you become like us by circumcising all your meals. Then we will give you our daughters and take your daughters for ourselves. We'll settle among you and become one people with you. But if you will not agree to be circumcised, we'll take our sister and go. 
Their proposal seemed good to Hamor and his son Shechem. The young man, who was the most honored of all his father's family, lost no time in doing what they said because he was delighted with Jacob's daughter. So Hamor and his son Shechem went to the gates of their city to speak to the men of their city. These men are friendly toward us. They said, let them live in our land and trade in it. The land has plenty of room for them. We can marry their daughters and they can marry ours. But the men will agree to live with us as one people only on the condition that our males be circumcised as they themselves are. Won't their livestock, their property, and all their other animals become ours? So let us agree to their terms, and they will settle among us. All the men who went out of the city gate agreed with Hamor and his son Shechem, and every male in the city was circumcised. Three days later, while all of them were still in pain, two of Jacob's sons, Simeon and Levi, Dina's brothers, took their sword and attacked the unsuspecting city, killing every male. They put Hamor and his son Shechem to the sword and took dinner from Shechem's house and left. The sons of Jacob came upon the dead bodies and looted the city where the city, their sister had been defiled. They seized their flocks and herds and donkeys and everything else of theirs in the city and out in the fields. They carried off all their wealth and all their women and children, taking as plunder everything in the houses. Then Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, You have brought trouble on me by making me obnoxious to the Canaanites and Perizzites, the people living in this land. We are few in number, and if they join forces against me and attack me, I and my household will be destroyed. But they replied, should he have treated our sister like a prostitute? So that's the reading of the Old Testament. The reading of the New Testament for today, January 16th. Matthew, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 7 to 30. As John's disciples were leaving, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who wear fine clothes are in kings' palaces. Then what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you. And more than a prophet, this is the one about whom it is written, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. From the days of John the Baptist up to until now, the kingdom of heaven has been subjected to violence and violent people have been reading it. For all the prophets and the law prophesied unto John. And if you are willing to accept it, he is the Elijah who was to come. Whoever has ears, let them hear. To what can I compare this generation? They are like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling out to others. We played the pipe for you, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they said, he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, here is a glutton, and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by her deeds. Then Jesus began to denounce the towns in which most of his miracles had been performed because they did not repent. Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon, 
they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, it will be more bearable for Tyre and Sidon on the day of judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be lifted to the heavens? No, you will go down to Hades. Hades. For if the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Sodom, it would have remained to this day. But I tell you that it will be more bearable for Sodom on the day of judgment than for you. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and the earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you are pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So that's the reading for the New Testament. The reading for the Psalm, Psalm 14, for the director of music of David. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. Their deeds are vile. There is no one who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on all mankind to see if there are any who understand, any who seek God. All have turned away. All have become corrupt. There is no one who does good. Not even one. Do all these evildoers know nothing? They devour my people as though eating bread. They never call on the Lord. But there they are overwhelmed with dread. For God is present in the company of the righteous. You evildoers frustrate the plans of the poor. For the Lord is their refuge. Oh, that salvation for Israel will come out of Zion when the Lord restores his people. Let Jacob resolve, rejoice and Israel be glad. So that's the reading of the Psalms. Reading of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 19 to 20. By wisdom, the Lord laid the earth's foundations. By understanding, he set the heavens in place. By his knowledge, the watery depths were divided, and the clouds let drop the dew. So that ends the Bible reading for today, January 16th.